A couple formats ago, Adamantipators was one of the best decks in Yu-Gi-Oh's metagame. Introducing Crystron Hauke Fibrax pushed this deck to its limit with how many times it could extend into different plays. And then when it was released in Yu-Gi-Oh Master Duel, it also had that same sort of longevity with Block Dragon being introduced into the game and being able to extend the plays more, having multiple card advantages and being able to play multiple hand traps. Those two cards are banned in both the TCG and Master Duel. The deck doesn't really last too well being able to recycle cards as good as certain other meta decks will. However, I still think it's a viable option to play just going first because of how strong a board that this deck can put up. If you haven't already, be sure to go ahead and leave a like on the video and subscribe as I'll be making more frequent uploads. So in today's deck list, we play one Gigantes. He is an extender you have in your hand. Now, typically a lot of your cards will require you to, let's say, lose card advantage in your hand. So I've chucked in a couple engines that you might not have seen before, but will help you um, basically creating that hand advantage. Gigantes is a rock monster who banishes an earth monster from a graveyard to special summon himself. He's a level four body, which helps us go into some of our synchro plays. We play two Koakimeru Guardian. Ideally, he's not the final negate you want ending up on your board. He's there as a temporary negate to help play against certain hand traps like Vela, Ash, or Nibiru. We play a Tackle Crusader because going second, this deck is very weak. Tackle Crusader can help going second and just having a bit of follow up or maybe turn three, being able to just put one of your opponent's monsters in face down or return one spell and trap. Super, super helpful. I only play one because it can be a bit bricky if you draw into it. Majesty Pegasus, the Draco Slayer. Now, this is a new engine that I thought I could implement into the deck. I've never seen anyone do this before, but I noticed that Shadol Zephrakor is a rock monster. And the whole premise of the Adamantipator monsters is that they can well, excavate five cards, search a rock monster, special summon the rock monster, and then you get the rock monster's effect. The fact that he's a rock and a pendulum monster lets us go into Ignis the Prominence, the Blasting Draco Slayer, which then allows us to special summon Majesty Pegasus the Draco Slayer from our deck and then we get a really overpowered effect if this card is special summoned by the effect of a Draco Slayer card or Pendulum Summoned you can add one field spell from your deck to your hand then discard one card so adding a field spell from a deck to our hand and the fact that this is a spellcaster monster lets us do two things. In this meta, uh, Necro Valley is a very strong card. It beats Tenpai, it beats Snake Eye, it beats a huge, a huge amount of decks. And if Necro Valley doesn't work for you, then we play Secret Village of the Spellcasters. Uh, because we play Naturia Beast and we play Secret Village of the Spellcasters, it basically means that our opponent will pretty much never have access to their spell cards. We play three Adamant's Pater Analyzer because ideally, even though you're not getting his effect to special summon himself, you are getting him as a normal summon, which can help play into some of our other cards. Quacky Mary Supplier, pretty standard. If a card's sent to the graveyard, we can then special summon him. Uh, Shadol Zephrakor, I've already explained why we play three of those. One Gate Blocker, three Gorgonic Gargoyle, huge card, you ideally want to just get this off on your normal summon so in your starter hand you don't really want to be special summoning it with your adamantipators because he's a level three dark monster which means you can't go into natoria beast because that requires it to be earth you could also run a battery man package which i was doing before but i just figured it's kind of bricky ashoka pillar now what this does is it searches us an equip spell and the equip spell we're searching in this deck is Cursed Bamboo Sword. We play two Cursed Bamboo Sword because if we draw one, this card goes to the graveyard and lets us trigger an effect to search a Golden Bamboo Sword. Then if we special summon Ashoka Pillar, we can then get another Cursed Bamboo Sword, activate it. Then we can activate Golden Bamboo Sword, draw more cards and have more card advantage. We play three Seeker. It's a special summon um, when you control an Adamantipator monster. This card just allows us to get a extra normal summon. If you're playing uh, the Water Rock Adamantipator monster, it can synergize quite well, but 
I had that in the deck, ran it a couple times, and I figured it bricked more often than not. So, removed that. We played three Doki Doki, um, one of the best extenders in this deck, three Adamantipator Researchers, three Adamantipator Signs, Golden Bamboo Sword already explained, Cursed Bamboo Sword already explained. We played one Secret Village of the Spellcasters already explained. So, extra deck, we have Cheng Ying, a uh, pretty standard Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon. Drag guy I run because going second, his effect can be very useful in order to return our opponent's cards. Ignis the Prominence, um, Clear Wing Synchro Dragon, just a generic level 7 Synchro. Uh, Raptite, very useful. You could run uh, Leo, but I decided against it. Naturia Beast, not much needed to be said. We side in a Naturia Barkion if our opponent is playing traps. Herald of the Arclight does come up occasionally, has a very cool first effect. Um, any monster sent from the hand or main deck to the graveyard is banished as instead. Uh, but it also serves as an Omni Negate going first if you run up against a Nibiru or something like that. It can also come in pretty handy. Uh, we play an Abyss Dweller because Secret Village of the Spellcasters is often searched and you're able to summon an Abyss Dweller because you play so many level 4s. We can also side in Necro Valley, but because we have access to Abyss Dweller, I tend to go against it. You can play alternative level 4s like maybe a Tornado Dragon or just an, a Negate, but I think Abyss Dweller is probably the best thing for the deck. Gorgonic Guardian. We play one access code Torka, one Appaloosa, one Nightmare Unicorn, SP Little Knight, and an IP Masquerina. Uh, you're only really using your Nightmare Unicorn to link climb into access code Torka. You could run a Promethean Princess package as well, but I just find I prefer access code. Side deck is completely up to you. I'd say just make sure you put a Barkion in there, a Necro Valley in there, and then some blowout going second cards. And yeah. Let's see how the deck runs into some test hands. So we've drawn a pretty good hand. Like I said, an Emancipator Analyzer is ideally your first special summon, your first normal summon, sorry. And then we can special summon a Seeker. Uh, we have the Supplier for follow-up when something goes into the graveyard. Zephyr calls a bit of a dead draw. However, we can still use it as discard fodder and things of other nature. So let's go normal summon that, special summon this. Now you, one thing about playing this deck you need to remember is that because we're special summoning so much, you need to play well into your monster zones. So be very careful when you're special summoning. Make sure you have accounted for how many zones you have. I'm gonna use Analyzer's effect first. And we drew, we can special summon Doki Doki. Have a nice extender there. Activate Seeker, Let's see what else we do, and there you go, we get the Zephyr Core, a very, very good special summon. Now we can go into our Draco Slayer, activate Supplier Effect, and you see what I mean when I say our zones get clogged quite fast. So we already have three, this is why we didn't want to activate the Doki Doki because we can then activate um, this effect to grab this, activate this effect to grab this, and then we can discard our Zephyr Core. Like I said, we do discard somewhat often. A Spellcaster, it's not really going to affect us yet. We can then go into a Raptite and then get Raptite's effect see what we can special summon. We still haven't used the Doki Doki, so like I said, we do have quite a bit of extension. We haven't used Researcher's effect. So I'm gonna special summon Researcher. Now what to do here, because we do have a lot of zones cleared up, um, zones clogged up, sorry. We don't really want to get rid of our Majesty Pegasus, the Draco Slayer, because we control a Spellcaster, and we don't play any Spellcasters in the extra deck. You can change this, so instead of a Cheng Ying, you can use a Nirvana High Paladin, which would be a decent option, but I just don't see it coming up that often. 
So what I'm going to do instead is sacrifice our rap diet and our ignis the prominence in order to go into an IP Muscarina. Then I'm going to special summon Gate Blocker. Yeah. Now our opponent can't target any of our cards with card effects. I can then activate Doki Doki. We'll get rid of our Quacky Miru. I'm going to take away Guardian and we're going to go into a Kawaki Meru Guardian. And now what we can do is go into a Herald of the Arclight. And what this board is, is very strong. We have a Monster Negate. Or we can't be targeted by card effects and we negate our opponent's field spell. We have it so our opponent can't activate spell cards. We have an IP Mascarino, so we can go into a Nightmare Unicorn or an SP Little Knight. We have Herald of the Arclight, which says any monster sent from the hand or main deck to the graveyard is banished instead. And it's an Omni Negate. So this is pretty much one of the strongest boards you can have. Um, there are definitely way stronger boards you can have. I think the strongest board I have had is a Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon with a four material Appaloosa, an Eturian Beast, and at the time it was a Necro Valley instead of the Secret Village. But yeah, you can play a lot of variations. The main point is we lock our opponent out of the graveyard and we lock them out of the spell cards. Um, Monster Negates generally just come easier with Kwaki Meru Guardian. You can play some of the other Kwaki Mirrors, some of them negate special summons, some of them negate trap effects. Uh, I don't think there's one for spell effects, but there is one for monster effects, and that's the one we use the most. But yeah, that's just generally one of the test hands. If you guys enjoyed this video, uh, be sure to drop a like and comment down below. I'll make some more test hands for you, let you guys get the general idea of how to play the deck.